The government is not driving innovation today. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, they're driving innovation today. The automotive industry is probably outpacing aerospace in some cases in, in, in automation or unmanned you know, kind of things. So, so where innovation is coming from is different. And we've, we have to ask ourselves constantly, is, is the next brilliant innovation coming out of our supply chain or is it coming out of someone else's supply chain or some other sector and are we going to miss it? So this reliance on innovation, expertise and investment, are our suppliers healthy enough to continue the kinds of investment in R&D, in people, talent development, capital, brick and mortar, to be able to participate in this kind of innovation, this kind of growth. So something we, we spend far more time on today than we ever had to in the past. I talked about globalization. So today, if you, uh, uh, Boeing Defense spends about 10%, 12%, I think it is, outside the United States. 12% of our dollars are spent outside the U.S. About 11 or 12% of our suppliers also, the numbers are about the same. When we spend outside the U.S., it's most often in England, Canada, or Japan. And the reason why is these are countries that have good security relationships with the United States. They have a strong, mature aerospace industry on parity in many, many things with the United States. A lot of transparency, rule of law, contract law, things like that, very similar to the U.S. Uh, their commercial code's a little different down in Australia, but in England, but not that different. You can do business in these countries. You can trust the business in these countries. We've been doing it for decades. But the growth is taking place in the Middle East, in India, in certain regions of Asia, Indonesia, things like that. That's where the new market growth is taking place. They don't have long established aerospace industries. You know, they don't always have the same rule of law or rule of contract law or, or honoring intellectual properties and things that we experience in the U.S. Heck, culturally, I don't think we really understand them either. So there are a lot of challenges to us, a lot of new risk profiles that we're going to have to simply understand and embrace you know, as we start to kind of move that business. Now, most of what we buy from England, Canada, and Japan, I'm actually buying another company's, I'm buying their intellectual, the product of their intellectual property. If I'm getting a, um, I gotta be careful here, what I say, if I'm getting a fuel system from Cobham in England, that's their design. I can't just say, oh, I'm gonna stop buying your fuel system or I have it made in India. It's not mine to move, it's theirs. You know? so, so this idea of, of when you're that heavily outsourced or invested in your supply chain, and now you have to start to really move things and look for new sources of supply, because the other thing about being in the defense industry is defense products are exempt from the WTO rules on aviation that prohibit offset in trade. Commercial airlines, are, there's supposed to be no offset in the commercial airline business. Trust me, there's offset. They just call it industrial participation. Defense was exempt from that, and so defense products in most countries, except Australia, UK, and Japan, they're offset. So if we sell a fighter to India, the nation of India, because they're spending their taxpayers' dollars, say, okay, Boeing, I want you to do an equivalent amount of business in, with suppliers in India on that airplane. So when, when our supply chain has to follow the market or follow the sales of the product into many countries, there aren't many industries that have to do it that way, uh, but ours is one. So if I sell in a certain part of the world, I'm going to have to start sourcing in that same part of the world you know, to satisfy those offset obligations. The key are finding companies that I would source in that country anyway, even if it wasn't for offset. Take, take the but for argument away from it. Say it would be economically efficient the source there, and they're buying defense products, that's golden. That's an opportunity we're looking for. What we want to avoid are the ones where they want to buy the defense product, but honestly, they wouldn't be the most affordable, the most effective, the most risk-free place in the world to source. That takes a lot of time and a lot of money, you know, to get that right. So that's some of the globalization of risk.